All right, we have two pieces of news today. First, the Sora announcement, which has been long awaited. I think it's nine months now. I thought it was seven or eight, but I, I'm wrong. Time is a flat circle. It's been at least nine months since Sora was teased and OpenAI finally announced it. And no, you cannot have it. <laughs> and we'll get into why. Uh, and then Willow, which is arguably bigger news that Google dropped by surprise. So Sora first. Sora is a text to video system. Sora was teased a long time ago. I guess it was nine months ago. And it looked incredible then. There was a leak over the weekend by some angry artists who were in a theater who were filming it secretly. And it looked incredible in the leak. So ironically, the artists probably increased uptake on the new product. And uptake was so high after 10 a.m. Pacific yesterday when they announced it that within an hour they were shutting down access. They just did not have the compute to handle it. And that suggests to me that they don't know when most people who were trying to sign up through the day are going to get access. They severely underestimated demand. And I think that was a foreseeable problem. Like at the end of the day, if you tease this for nine months and then an artist leaks it the weekend before, which you, know, you can't control, but you should expect a lot of demand because the leak looked incredible. Everyone wants to type in their movie idea and see it come to life. And even though we're all only getting like five second videos on plus plans and 20 second videos on pro plans, we, we have this ability to take our imagination and put it on a screen and we, we all want to try. And I, I sympathize with them. They've built something so magical that everyone wants it. Like sympathy isn't the right word. It's incredible. They have a wonderful high quality problem. I'm in awe. Maybe that's a better word. Like, well done. But I don't know when we're going to access it because this is heavy, heavy compute to get a video out of a piece of text. They have a bunch of other heavy compute applications. They have more days of open AI. They are doing new kinds of compute with O1 and O1 Pro. So I'm not sure what's going to happen or when SOAR is going to be widely available. I know they're doing their best. Uh, and we'll just have to see. The team is building magic effectively, and it turns out most people in the world want magic. And we will have to see when the computers are available so that we can all play with our text to video ideas. Moving on to Willow, arguably the bigger news of the day. Willow is a quantum chip from Google. Now, I want you to have the context that Google does quantum announcements every fall, like clockwork. They just do. And the reason why this one is interesting is this chip has demonstrated the ability to scale qubits while reducing errors. For 30 some years, quantum computing has meant scaling quantum qubits and getting more and more errors so the system becomes more unstable. It's inherently unscalable. Google thinks they have solved that scalability problem, and the Willow chip is basically a demonstration piece to say, look, we can do this at a scale of 105 qubits. A qubit, by the way, is instead of the classical bit with two states, a qubit has three states. It has uh, zero and one and superposition. And having that additional bit state allows it to calculate in parallel. So it can calculate eight states in parallel with like a single bit, for example. Now you start to scale that up. You start to get very, very combinatorial, very, very fast. And so Google rightly called out that part of why they're focused on quantum is they see the potential long-term for quantum to outscale AI. And this is where the caveats come in. There was a lot of hand wringing on the internet that like our passwords aren't safe and our Bitcoin seed phrases aren't safe and this and that. This is not a commercially scalable chip. This is not coming to iPhone. This is not coming to laptops. This is living in a research lab. It may get to a few science labs that want to look at quantum interactions. But Google themselves admits they're a long way from something stable enough that they can go after a potential chip build. Right now, the qubits themselves, world record, they're staying staying stable for five microseconds, I believe. It, it, it's a tiny amount of time. And if you are having trouble with stability and you're still trying to figure out how to scale, yes, like for people who are in the space of cryptography, now is probably the time to start thinking about 
post-quantum cryptography. Good thing to get ahead on that. And there are people who are, based on what I read on X, they're like running to their computers and working on it. But for ordinary people, this is not going to be used to hack things right away. There's just not enough of them. They're not in that uh, environment. And even the test that was run, the really famous one where it was like the, the headline on the announcements, they can do a calculation in five minutes that would take a supercomputer 10 septillion years. Amazing, but it was a deliberately designed test calculation. It wasn't a piece of like algorithmic math we use in computers. So it does a test calculation really fast. That's great. But that doesn't really help us with building software and systems. So I don't want to take away from the achievement because getting to a spot where you can scale qubits and reduce errors over time is a massive achievement. It's something that the quantum field has been working on for 30 years. But that does not mean that it is commercially available. And I saw some misunderstanding about that. One last piece on the Willow thing. They casually threw out there. I don't know another word for it. It was an aside in the Willow announcement. And I'll link to that. They said, we suspect that the ability of this chip to solve problems where supercomputers would exceed the length of the livable universe and to do so in less than five minutes is in line with the theory that quantum computing occurs in multiple universes at once. Essentially, what Google said is their chip is computing in the multiverse. And uh, by the way, it's just, you know, by the way, there's a multiverse and we're computing in it. Thanks, Google. I don't know what to do with that. Uh, and uh, this is a strange timeline to be living in. And we will see how things progress from here. Every day seems to have a lot of news. Cheers.